Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got here for you in this review is the new Seven Artisans 35mm f0.95 lens. Now, that's a crazy fast max aperture lens. This actually goes for about $250 US. And it's a fully manual lens design optimized for the APS-C crop factor cameras like the Sony a6400, for example, which is what I'm going to use to test this lens out. So if you're not aware, Seven Artisans is a really cool company. They, it's a group of people that got together and they decided to make really affordable, high quality optical lenses that are fully manual but that just give you a really good bang for the buck as far as build quality goes and, and lens character, like in the real world. I already reviewed the Seven Artisans 55mm f1.4 lens and I was very impressed with that lens. Again, based on build quality, overall character in the real world, the images produced were quite good. And I also reviewed the 35mm f1.2 lens, which was a pretty darn good lens as well. And again, like the lens character and overall build quality just basically has made me a fan of Seven Artisans. So I will have those other reviews linked down below the video. So just go down like right there. Oh yeah, yeah, right there. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the link for the other rev uh, Seven Artisan lens reviews that I already did. As far as this lens review goes, let's just get right into it. All right, so for starters, the Seven Artisans 35 millimeter f 0.95 lens comes with this cool case. Now this is a nice case. It's uh, some kind of pleather material, but it's well made. It feels like good quality and it's got a nice zipper on there with with a little rubbery pleathery tab and uh, I'm a big fan of this case. So I'm happy it came with that. And that's a nice little feature. Now when looking at the lens itself, it's definitely beefy. I mean it feels like a brick. It's, it's, it's fairly heavy. It weighs in it 369 grams, which is, you know, a decent amount and has a nice lens cap that just fits over. So it just kind of slides on there. There's no snapping or anything and it stays on well. It's just like perfectly engineered to fit on there nice and smooth, which I really like. That's a cool design. And the only other lens I have that does that is my Minolta, my old school Minolta 50 millimeter f1.4 lens has a similar design. I'm not sure what they call this when it just slides on like that, but it's pretty darn cool. And you can see just how big the lens is in my hand. So looking at this guy from the front here, you can see if I turn the aperture, you can see the diaphragm in there. And that is a 12 blade aperture diaphragm, which is really nice. And it's going to produce super buttery gravy boat style bouquet renderings. I'm talking like pure butter back there, as you will see in the sample photos shortly. Now, if you look at it from the back side here, you have the nice E-mount lens mount, but this lens is also made for Fuji and Canon and things like that. And you can see it's actually a darker metal than normal. Normally it's just like, you know, straight up polished steel looking. This one is darker. It's like a darker gray, but it looks really nice. And you can just see how big that element is on the back. It has to be for that incredibly fast aperture that this thing produces. Now, looking at it from this angle here, you can see the nice engraving of the focus distance and stuff like that. And here is the focus ring. And the focus ring feels fantastic. It's very, very nice and smooth, and it has a really good amount of dampening feedback. Super impressed with the quality feel of this focus ring. And you can see the lens actually grows a little bit as you focus, just so you're aware. Now the aperture ring is up here and it is de-clicked, so there's no clicking, which kind of sucks for photography, honestly, because this thing turns by mistake like so easily. And so the resistance could be a little bit more, but it does feel very, very buttery smooth, which is nice for video purposes if you want to do an aperture throw, for example. But I prefer just for photography when it like locks onto the different apertures, just because, it, like I said, it accidentally will turn on you. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it is what it is. So for the minimum focus distance, you can get as close as 0.37 meters, which is fairly close as you will see in the lab testing in a moment. And the aperture does go from 0.095 all the way to f16, just for reference. The lens also features 11 elements in eight groups. 
as you can see here. And one other thing on the front, it's a 52 millimeter filter thread. So if you wanna put a filter on there for video and things like that, you're gonna need a 52 millimeter, just so you're aware. The lens body itself is all metal. So it's just really well made. And like I said, I'm just impressed with the build quality of this lens considering the price point of approximately $250 US. Like this really feels like it should cost like four or $500 just as far as build quality goes. Now I know it's fully manual and it doesn't have any electronics or anything like that, which is pretty much the reason why it's only $250 US, but I've used other cheaper lenses and the build quality is much better on the Seven Artisans than some of the other really affordable manual lenses that are out there today. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, checking out the lab scene. And this is what we're looking at, 35 millimeter. And I'm fairly close to the lab scene. And so you can see the detail rendered. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you is the lens distortion here. So this is a fully manual lens, so there's no electronics, there's no lens profile built in. But if you select manual here, and you drag up the distortion to about plus 18, that will pretty much render this as, as good as you're gonna get it. Somewhere right around here, 15, 14 or so. You can just pull that in, and then you can hit constrain crop here if you want, just to constrain the crop, and that'll pretty much fix the distortion that is present for the most part. So it's really not that bad. So I just I'm just resetting that there, turn that off. So like I said, because this is fully manual, you're not gonna see up here in the EXIF data what aperture the lens is at. So over here in the caption area, I have the information for you. So this is F0.95, so this is maximum aperture. And I tried my best to get the focus as sharp as possible, but the depth of field is so shallow that it really is difficult to nail the focus. Even using the focus magnify tool and stuff like that on, on the lab scene, I was just like feathering it back and forth and this is as close as I can get it. It's pretty sharp right here in the center, but it's definitely not tack sharp. So it will sharpen up as the lens stops down. But again, for wide open, 0.95 it's actually pretty good and a little bit better than i was expecting to be honest with you i wasn't sure what to expect i've never used a lens this fast before so you can see here when i switch to f 1.4 and i'll zoom in you can see the dollar bill did sharpen up a little bit and you could see the depth of field fall off in the corner areas the corners are definitely a little bit soft here for sure even at f 1.4 and then when I stop it down to f2.8, you can see the corners do sharpen up a little bit. And over here in the center area, the dollar bill is starting to look really good. And now we're looking at f4. And f4, you can see the corners are actually tacking up quite nice. The crayons are looking really good. And the dollar bill here is looking great as well. So right around f4, you can expect pretty darn good sharpness corner to corner. Now another thing I wanted to show you is here in the high contrast areas, look at this red fringing that you have on the coin and this, you know, just high contrast metal. So that's worth noting. In addition, you do have a little bit of green on the bouquet balls in the background, um, wide open in particular. When you stop it down a little bit, you can see on these bouquet balls, this is at f1.4, there is that green roundness on the bouquet as well just so you're aware but then when you stop it down to f2.8 it kind of goes away for the most part as you can see here so i just wanted to make you aware of that and then stopping down to f4 here's f5.6 and i'll just zoom in on the dollar bill so you can see f5.6 is just fantastic sharpness on the dollar bill and pretty much excellent all the way across the board into the corners and everything so 5.6 is really very very sharp and then we have f8 here and f16 just so you can see the background coming into focus here and i'll go back to 0 0.095 so you can just see how much that butters out in the background so that's pretty much the baseline for the lab now here is a minimum focus distance test and you can see if i zoom in on the quarter i had the quarter set at a slight angle because again, it's very hard to nail the depth of field perfectly. So I put it at an angle here so I would ensure that at least some part of the quarter would be nice and sharp. 
but what you can see is the red fringing and then the greenish blue fringing here on either side of the quarter. So let's stop her down. This is wide open F 0.95. And then if I stop it down F 1.4, you could see the sharpness does increase quite a bit, but that fringing is still there. Here's F 2. And then here is F 2.8. And you can see here that the fringing is most of the way gone, but not all the way. It's still there a little bit. And then here at F4, you can see the fringing for the most part is gone, but it is still there just a little bit. Now this is easily correctable in Lightroom, but it is worth noting. And then you can see, see here at F8 that it's completely gone. There is no fringing at all. It just looks razor blade tack sharp. And here at F16, the diffraction factor came in a little bit, so it did soften up just a little bit, but there's still no fringing. It looks really good, but you can see the difference here at F8. And then here at F4, looking really, really good in the lab. And again, sharpness is very good here at F2.8, but there is that little bit of fringing. But like I said, fairly easily correctable in Lightroom. You could actually just use the desaturate brush to pull that out, or you can use the fringing tool eyedropper as well. Now here's just an aperture throw test in the lab here so you can see 4k. All right so moving on to some real world photos. It was my niece's birthday the other day and uh, that was the day I actually got this lens so I brought it over and took some pictures of the birthday cake and you can see the depth of field play you can get here on the candles is just ridiculous. Look at this. These are raw files by the way. I didn't do any adjustments. They are just raw straight off the camera. And look at that depth of field play you can get with such an unbelievably fast aperture lens. Also, in low light, because the aperture is so fast, you're going to get very low ISO numbers. As you can see here, I'm at ISO 100, 1 40th of a second. And just keep your eye up here if you want to see what the ISOs and shutter speeds are, just so um, you're aware. So here they're lighting the candle. And here's my niece, Allie. And you can see, just look at this, real world, it looks very, very good. Sharpness isn't exactly razor blade, the shutter speed was really slow at 1 30th of a second, I was hand holding, but again, in the real world, the sharpness is very good in this scenario, in my opinion, and uh, I have many other sample photos to show you, but I was happy with how this resulted in just candlelight. You could see just that killer depth of field play. You could see her friend here on the left is out of focus. And then this cool rendering of a light outside in the background. And then here's just one of the candles being blown out. And um, cool 1 30th of a second shutter speed made this nice swirly effect with the smoke, which I thought came out pretty cool. Here's another photo of the piece of cake I ate. And again, just real world. Look at this. It's excellent quality. And you get that nice depth of field play. So a lot of fun using a lens like this, especially manual focus. Now here's just a picture of this sour IPA beer I had the other day. I didn't really like it actually, but uh, it was great for a test shot here just so you can see how the background bouquet balls render and so forth. And then I put the camera in a portrait orientation and took pretty much the same shot just so you can see how the lens renders. Now walking around at work, I took a couple of pictures of some equipment that has LED lights on it and fiber optic cabling and whatnot going in there. So you can see just that killer background defocus rendering and separation that you can get. Now this is just looking down and here's another one on the back of a piece of equipment and you can just see these bouquet balls, the way that they render I mean, it's just fantastic depth of field play. Here's another one, nice color here. And you could, again, see the sharpness in the real world and the depth of field is just phenomenal, in my opinion, especially for $250. You always have to factor in that price. Now, this is looking down like a 15-foot, basically, hallway, for lack of a better word, in uh, one of the rooms that I work in. And just look at this card sticking out of the piece of equipment and that depth of field separation is just absolutely killer. Now here I'm just playing with the focus here so you can see just how incredibly shallow the depth of field is at the minimum focus distance in the real world. Now I'm just adjusting the aperture. Here's just another one. Came out pretty good I thought. And then look at the minimum focus distance here looking at this glass. Just look at that depth of field. I mean, the front of the glass, you can't even you can't even see it. It just butters right out. Super awesome results, in my opinion. 
And this is just the window blinds here I was focusing. I just thought that depth of field play would be a cool sample. And then to the left, I had some pumpkins here on top of my speaker. And you can see the blinds, you know, the light coming through looked kind of cool. Now looking down at my mountain bike seat, you can see just the ground in the background and the bike itself, how it just butters right out. And uh, it just looks really cool. Now here's a closer look at the tire. And look at that depth of field play. I mean, you could see the fork coming down. It just butters right out. And I didn't even realize it, but I had a bug here on my tire. Look at that little guy crawling around. <laughs> my tires are starting to get worn out. Here's just another one looking down at the shock. And here's one of Layla. I just had Layla looking up at me here just for a quick test shot here. I didn't really have much time. But again, look at the real world sharpness. I mean, that's phenomenal. Excellent, excellent optic. And again, if you have somebody that's willing to hold still for you, you can get some really, really killer portraits with this lens, especially with some of the lens flaring effects you can get, which you'll see in a minute. Now, here's just one of my car, and here's Jace in the background on his scooter. And just look at this tree. Look at those bouquet balls. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic, killer rendering. It almost looks like 3D and, and stuff. Like, look at that. Just awesome, in my opinion. I just lowered the camera a little bit to get some foreground detail here. And again, the quality is just very good. Now I just got a little bit closer and focused on the inside of my headlight here. And you can see the depth of field fall off is just awesome. Here's another one. Had the camera really low, and I painted this rock the other day with the kids. And we leaned it up against the tree out front. And again, just looking at this scene, got some nice depth of field play. This is just like a cool ornament that Jace made. It's one of those scratch-off type style designs. Now here's just the rope I have hanging in my living room. I have a swing hanging. So this is wide open at f0.95. And you can see the depth of field is crazy narrow. And then I stopped it down to f4, just so you can see the difference there. And now you can see the sharpness is absolutely fantastic. You can see all the individual strands. And here is f0.95, again, just for reference. And then f4. And then outside, just looking at the barbecue here, here's the temperature on the barbecue, the thermostat. Here's just a pine tree. And again, that depth of field is so crazy narrow. Here's just one looking off the deck, and you can see I have the aperture at 0 0.095, and I focused on this tree. And you can see the detail on the tree is pretty darn good. And I have my house here in the foreground, so that's the depth of field play in this scenario. And then this morning, I just went outside here and took some more pictures, trying to show you off some of that lens flare effects you can get. And uh, shooting into the sun, this is what it looks like in this scenario. And then using the sun for a light, I focused on this leaf here and got some really nice results, nice color and clarity. Here's another one. Very, very nice color and clarity. And then walking into the woods, I was just aiming the camera down a little bit, and I saw this lens flare pop up, so I took a picture just so you can see what kind of lens flare you can get. Here's just another example of 0 0.95 versus f4. So you can see here, f4 gets you pretty good background separation, but nowhere near as good as this. I mean, just look at that. That's just pure butter right there. And again, f4 is not bad, but um, does not yield that magical separation like you can get at that 0 0.95. Now here's just another lens flare. I wanted to show you here a sample. Here's some 4K footage looking at that scene so you can see the lens flare. And at a slightly different angle here, you can see the lens flare coming in. And you can, like I said, if you're using this for a portrait scenario, you can get some really cool results. Here's another angle of that incredible depth of field. And here's just the water tower down the road. I shot this one at f4, so you can see the sharpness is just excellent pretty much across the board. And here's just another f4 versus f0.95. A little bit overexposed there, but still pretty cool looking. And now here's shooting at a fence here by the water tower, and then shooting through the fence. I didn't move the camera, I just focused on the water tower here. So you can see the out of focus fence in the foreground, just for reference. That's what it looks like when it renders. Now here's 0 0.95 versus F4. So you can see F4 is definitely much, much sharper and cleaner here in the high contrast areas. You can see there's a little bit of fringing there on the railing, but it's also out of focus because the depth of field is just so darn shallow. Now here's just another one shooting through the fence. This one's at F4, so you can see the detail of the fence here on the bottom left. 
and then I shot pretty much the same shot at 0 0.95 and you can see the fence just pretty much disappears. Here's just a couple more that I think really show off the character of this lens quite well. You could see I focused on this weed here and just look at that cool bouquet rendering and depth of field play you can get with this lens. Very, very cool. And I just love the way that it renders. Here's just another one of a leaf. It's got some nice lens flare action going on and uh, very cool results in my opinion. Just one more. Now here's one just looking down at my foot and I was walking out of the woods there. And that's pretty much what you can expect from a lens like this. All right guys, so as you can see, the Seven Artisans 35mm f 0.95 lens is really good in the real world. It has excellent character and that 35mm, you know, somewhat wide angle view gives you much more leeway than the 55mm, for example, when you factor in the effect of focal range, which works out to about 52mm approximately. So again, the lab photos, were pretty conclusive showing the softness in the corners until you know basically you stop it down to like f4 f5.6 is when the sharpness really starts to come back in the corners and the depth of field play is just absolutely amazing with this lens due to the minimum focus distance being so close you can really get close to your subject and get that unbelievable background butter that uh, just makes for magical images and the lens flaring effects that you get with this lens as well is very similar to the other seven artisan lenses I reviewed. Um, it's almost like a rainbow flaring effect that you can get um, depending on what angle the lens is in relation to the sun as you saw in the real world sample photos. So it is manual focus so it's a little bit harder to you know get a portrait if you have a moving subject like a child or something like that um, but if you have you know somebody that can stand still it's actually pretty easy to use, especially if you use tools like focus peaking and magnify zoom, which I have a dedicated video tutorial on if you're not familiar with those tools. It really helps assist when using a manual lens like this. So I really hope you guys got what you were looking for in this review. Please feel free to ask questions below in the comment area. And again, below in the description area will be links to the lens and also recommended accessories for this lens if you are interested. If you feel like you got what you were looking for in this review, please do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, and also be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell if you wanna know about future videos as they are released. I have a couple more new reviews coming up soon, so please stay tuned for that. All right, have a great day, and everybody be safe out there. Take care.